you are welcome back to class. Now, as promised, we are taking uh, other financial intermediaries. Now, the term financial intermediary can be used to describe any person or organization that brings together investors and individuals or organizations seeking to raise uh, seeking to raise funds are we together. So, in this sense, financial intermediaries include uh, first some investment banks and commercial banks that deals in the capital markets with investors buying and selling shares of bonds in the secondary world in the secondary uh, markets and also they include stock markets which provide a marketplace for trading in shares provide what provides the marketplace for trading was for trading uh, in shares so now let's look at uh, Revenue standard, uh, that is the International Financial Reporting Standard, IFRS 15, which classifies the, stream, the streams of income that are qualified as revenue and other income under the words under these relevant uh, standards. Okay, so according to IFRS 15, revenue from contract with customers, uh, revenue is recognized as control is passed either over time or at a point in time i uh, i bought some uh, bags of rice from you okay and these bags of rice you own the shop in dioko markets okay where you store rice okay where you store rice is that clear so now i purchased these three bags of rice from you okay and uh, they are still in your store in dioko there Okay, but I've been issued receipts of sale, but the goods are still in your possession. So in this scale, in, in this case, uh the seller, you as a seller, you are not expected to recognize revenue since the goods are still in your possession. Okay, so now it's only when uh I come for the goods or the goods uh is being delivered to me by you. That's where you should recognize or that's where you should recognize the revenue because uh, if anything happens to these goods while in your premises, okay, then you'll be irresponsible. Either you refund my my money or you what you uh have me some other three bags of rice, okay? Or you get me what you get me three bags of uh, rice alternatively. Is that clear? Yes, and yes, thank you. I love you. Uh, uh, you grab ones. So, control of an asset is defined as the ability to derive the use of and obtain substantially all of the remaining benefits from the assets. Mind you, this includes the benefits, or it includes what it includes the ability to prevent others from directing the use of. And obtaining the benefit from the from the world from the asset. Yes, I want the three bags of rice. No else, okay. No else can no else can uh, uh can, no else can take out of it, okay. No else can take out of it without giving permission or without allowing such person to do that, okay. So uh, otherwise, then I have no control over it, okay. I have, but I have no control over it. I have no say over it. You own the car, and you could know what you could not uh, stop others from using this car wherever they would like to. And even this car, you cannot use it as your own. Words. So you don't. In that case, you don't own the car. Okay, you don't. Want, you don't own the car. So is it that? Your, is it that what the whole family owns the car? Or it belongs to a community or an institution, okay? Because if it is yours, you could what you could deny other people access. You could deny others access from what from using it, okay? So now, uh, control of an asset is divided as to what as the what as the ability to prevent, okay? As the what? Uh, okay, sorry. Let's take this one here. Control of an asset is divided as the ability to direct the use of and obtain substantially all of the remaining benefits from the assets. I uh, will together mind you, you also bear what you also bear uh, the burden as well. 
okay that's that the risk okay so the benefit related to the assets are the potential cash flows that may be obtained directly or indirectly so this includes but are not limited to using the assets to produce goods or services using the assets to enhance the value of other assets using the assets to settle liabilities or reduce expenses selling or exchanging the assets pledging the assets to secure a loan and holding the assets okay so an entity recognizes revenue over time if one of the following criteria is met if what if one of the following criteria is met one is that the customer simultaneously receives and consumes all of the benefits provided by the entity as the entity what as the entity uh, performs okay the customer was simultaneously receives and consumes all of the benefits provided by the entity as the entity performs them okay so such as what are uh, uh, let's say uh, a concert is that is that the rights okay or uh, media houses okay so like a tv show and the likes okay so uh, also the entities performs uh sorry the entities performance creates or an asset is an asset that the customer controls as the asset is what is created or the entity performs the uh, performance does not create an asset with an alternative use to the what to the entity and the entity as an enforce as what as an enforceable what enforceable right distribute together as an enforceable right to payment for performance completed to date okay so revenue streams are the various sources from which a business earns money from the sale of goods or the provision of services so the types of revenue that a business records on its accounts depend on the types of activities carried out by the business like the tele telecommunication or businesses okay you for shares and i time so you purchase an airtime of let's say 1000 naira. So if you still have these 1000 naira on your mobile, uh, Glow, MTN, Airtel, or whatever network cannot, or cannot uh, recognize that 1000 as a revenue, okay? So they only recognize it as a revenue when you begin to call, okay? When you start using this airtime on your line, okay? So your first call you use fifteen naira. The next call you use two hundred. The next call you so they recognize this revenue substantially, gradually as you enjoy the service because you uh, you get these items for a thousand naira. So as you make calls, you are what you are enjoying the services. Okay, you are receiving what you are receiving the benefits. Okay as well you are paying for it at the same what at the same time okay so at the point you purchase the head time the head time belongs to you so you can control the use of what you can control the use of the head time okay you might decide to use the old thousand era to call your girlfriend or to call your fancy or your spouse okay so you can use that the old one the old one thousand era i'm talking to john sorry uh, uh sorry john uh, let me, uh, Michael, you have, oh, uh, sorry, if that's your name, I'm very, 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 very sorry. Now, we are back in class. So, you might decide to use that, uh, the old 1000 to call your girlfriend or your boyfriend in whichever case. So, in that case, you control it. You control, you control the use. Mind you, you pay, you, you pay the cost of a thousand naira. That's the, in fact. And the risk is, what if you've activated a services on your mobile so uh, or you <laughs> like maybe you've loaned uh, airtime from the uh, service provider so as you are recharging the uh, 1000 airtime they deduct the your previous loan okay so that's just it so you you can control uh your you, you can control what you can control the benefits you can control what the benefits enjoyable from that are we together okay so revenue streams are what are the various sources from which a business earns money from the sale of goods 
uh, the provision of services and the types of revenue that the business records on its account depend on the types of activities carried out by the business. Uh, let's take the types of revenue. Types of revenue. And uh, mind you, generally speaking, the revenue accounts of retail businesses are what are more diverse or uh, sorry, more diverse as compared to businesses that provide uh, services, isn't it? Yes, and uh, yes. Now, what are the types of revenue new to you? Uh, to classify revenues at a high level, there are operating revenues and non uh, operating uh, revenues. Operating revenues describe the amounts earned from the company's core business operations. We can call these uh, uh, active or active income or active revenue. And non operating revenues refer to the money earned from a business side. Activities and this could be called passive words, passive income or passive uh, revenue. Am I speaking sense at all? Yes, sir. Thank you. If that should be this ca the case, we are progressing, right? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, many different revenue accounts are used by businesses in various industries. For the majority of companies, the following are a few common revenue accounts. Are we together? Yes, sir. Now we have our revenue from good, uh, good stores or service fees. Now this is the core operating revenue account for most of for most uh, businesses. For most of for most businesses, it is what it is the core revenue. Core what? Core revenue account for most businesses, and it is usually given a specific name such as sales revenue or services revenue. Sales or what? Sales or service uh, revenue. So, if a company is into what is into the production of uh, beverages, any sales from these. Uh, any money made from the sale of beverages will be classified as its worth as its active income, operating income, operating revenue. Is that clear? So that's sales or sales revenue. And if you are renting professional services, okay, such as a dry cleaning services, so any money earned from work from a uh, provision of your services or while uh, rendering services to customers. Okay, so that will be classified also as operating income. Meanwhile, because you are in a service industry, so it's called service uh, revenue. Are we together? So we also have the interest revenue, and this account records the interest and on investments such as debt securities, and this is usually a non-operating revenue if it is being uh, earned by non investment was non-investment uh, company okay or a uh, non banking words non banking and uh, and other what other financial institution non banking and other financial institution so it is being performed by maybe you are you you have what an investment okay so you you loan uh, uh you you have a loan or a fixed deposit okay so now any interest earned on this investment okay so such as debt debt securities and the like will be classified as interest uh, revenue and uh, if it is owed by a company okay so for such company it is what it is non operating uh, income non operating uh, Revenue which is passive, okay. So, so we have a rent revenue, and this account records and records what the amounts earned from renting out buildings or equipment, and it's considered what non operating, what non operating revenue, except you are in a real estate uh, management, okay. That is, you are operating as a what you are operating as a real uh, estate. Are uh, we together? Yes, sir. Or you are you are an investment or investment uh, company. So in such case, uh, like uh, income earned on investment property, okay, 
So if that if that is the business you are into, it will be recommended rather than operating, and if not, maybe you have a building or four apartment and you are using to it for business purposes, and the other one is being let out to or to uh, a third party. Okay, so any income received from these uh other apartments will be what will be classified as other income, and in such cases, it is what it is. Uh, a passive uh, income. So, also we have a dividend revenue, and this is the amount earned from holding stocks of other companies, and this is also non what non operating uh, revenue. Are uh, we together? It is what it is also non uh, operating revenue. We are progressing, right? Yes, thank you. Now, let's take a country treatment of edging transactions, and uh, also we shall discuss its income tax um, implications. Now, what do you understand by edging? Any transaction means any transaction entered into by the taxpayer in the normal course of the taxpayer's trade or business primarily to manage the risks of one price fluctuations or price changes or currency fluctuations with respect to ordinary property and interest rates or price changes or currency fluctuations with respect to borrowings or ordinary obligation or such other risks as the secretary may prescribe. As what as the secretary distributes security, okay. They what uh may 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 prescribe uh we together yes sir okay so now uh we are progressing right yes sir so you want to purchase an asset from uh London okay or let's say from USA and you you, you pay in dollar Okay, now imagine there's a fluctuation, there's a, a fall in 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 naira value. Okay, so now currently I say naira value is three twenty to one dollar. Okay, three twenty to one dollar. So at the time you are purchasing, uh, you 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 the naira or the exchange rate is three twenty to one dollar. So now you purchase on credit. Now you may decide to edge this transaction okay you might or you might decide to what you might decide to edge uh, this transaction should the case in future date uh there's fall in price maybe uh now is now strong against dollar so uh for every three hundred naira is exchanged for one dollar instead of two so now now is more strong is uh a bit stronger than what's done uh, Dollar in this case because it's a uh, uh, stretching uh, by 20 naira against what against uh, one dollar. So, in that case, if you have edged this type of uh, this transaction at the date it was made, then you what you pay less of what of the dollar amount you uh, of, of, uh, of the item you purchase, and if it is in the other case, then you what. You pay more, but once you have edged it, what there is no hours, uh, there is no cause for alarm. You still pay the same amount because it has been edged as at the time of a uh, purchase. Now let's take a snapshot of what of the most difficult areas of change for edge uh, accounting. Okay, now let's look at the edge effectiveness testing. Now, this is prospective only and can be qualitative depending on the complexity of the edge. Okay, now, like the 80% to 125% range is replaced by an objective based test that focuses on the economic relationship between the edge item and the edging instrument and the effect of credit risk on that economic cost. On that economic uh, relationship are we together so now let's look at the risk component now this will be designated as the edge item not only for financial items but also for non-financial items provided the risk component is separately identifiable and reliably measurable okay so uh we also have a uh, cost of edging now the cost of edging is that the time value of an option the forward elements of a forward contract and any foreign currency basis spread can be excluded from the designation 
of a financial instrument as the edging instrument and accounted for as cost of a uh, edging, the time value of an option, the forward element of a forward contract, and any foreign currency basis spread can be excluded from what from designation of a financial instrument and as the what as the edging instrument and what accounted for as cost of uh, edging. So this means that instead of the fair value changes of these elements affecting what affecting profit or loss, okay. That is the when I say fair value, it means the current market's value. Okay, so instead of it affecting what the elements are uh, the profit of loss, profit or loss rather, like a trading instrument, these amounts get allocated to what to profit or loss similar to what similar to transaction costs. So which can include basis adjustments and while fair value changes are what are temporarily recognized in other words in other compressive income. Okay, are we together? So let's look at the edging items. Uh, the general requirements of what qualifies as an eligible edge item are unchanged compared to IS 39 financial instruments. So, now an edge item can be one, a recognized asset or liability, an unrecognized firm commitment, a highly probable forecast transaction, or a net investment in a foreign. Uh, operation so this uh mind you all of the above all these okay can either be a single item or what or a group of items so provided the specific requirements for a group of items are what are met okay so only what only assets liabilities firm commitments okay are uh, for cash transaction with an external party qualify for what Qualify for edging was qualify for edging and qualify for edging and accounting only what's only forecast uh transaction firm commitments liabilities and the likes okay with what uh with external parties qualify was qualify for edge uh, accounts as an exemption a edge of the foreign currency risk of an inter group monetary item qualifies for us qualify for Edge accounting if that foreign currency risk affects what affects consolidated profits or loss. So, in addition, the foreign currency risk of a highly probable forecast in tri group transaction would be what would also qualify as a edging item if that transaction uh, affects consolidated what consolidated profit uh, or loss affects what affects consolidated consolidated sorry profit or loss. So, this requirements are what are unchanged from is 39 as with is 39 the item being edged must still be what must still be reliably was reliably measured okay so also from is 39 a forecast transaction must be what must be highly probable however what has changed in ifrs 9 you know is 39 is now what is now IFRS was IFRS 39. So whenever a new standard is being issued, uh, or, or a, a old standard is being revised, so it will be reissued in what's in IFRS. Sorry, so it is IFRS 9 and not IFRS 39. So are we together? So uh, compared to what, however, what has changed in IFRS 9 compared to IFRS 39 is how edge items are designated. In a edging was in a edging uh, relationship. So in particular, the designation of risks and nominal component and the designation of aggregated exposures and groups of items are what have also changed. So these changes are uh, these changes which should ultimately lead to more risk management activities qualify for edge accounting, all stem from the broader goal of the edge accounting project to better align. An entity's risk management approach with the accounting uh, outcome. Are uh, we together?